with the Republicans. And of course, they've reduced this to two hours, which is a real blessing because <laughs> there's only five or six candidates. Yeah. And uh, we really don't want to be here for three hours, and neither do you. But I think it'll be interesting because there was an article that came out today talking about how to beat Hillary Clinton. And they were talking about how Obama beat her in the last election. And I thought it was very interesting. They were talking to people from the Obama campaign. And they said Hillary was trying to define 2008 as a change from George Bush. Is this a problem that the Republicans are making? The Republicans, I think, are trying to make this a change from Obama instead of trying to transcend that and say, let's make America something great. Not just make America great again. That's the Trump <laughs> slogan. Everybody says, let's make hey. America great. But define that, you know, yeah. define that and say, Let's go, let's, let's treat people with respect. Let's respect individual liberty. Let's restore the Constitution. Let's do something, you know, some grand idea like that. Right. Okay, like let's obey the Constitution, you know. Right. Wouldn't that be better than to just make this a case about going after Obama? Right. Even to the extent the way they talk about Obama trade, okay. Instead of talking about it being global governance, as Senator Sessions has pointed out, they talk about it as being Obama trade. And they're the ones who are pushing it in the Senate right. and in the House. They're like, that's such a catchy name. Let's let's stick with that. And that, of course, every election cycle, that's what happens. It's the last year for you know the outgoing president, so he doesn't really even care. He's definitely going to get the bad press. Um, everything will be his fault. So then it's that same sort of left-right paradigm. Mm -hmm. Let's move away from what he left us with. And, and you're right, it's the exact same cycle. But now, here, they're actually trying to get us to vote for a Bush or a Clinton. I mean, it's so blatantly obvious how rigged yeah. it all is. Well, it's funny because everybody wants to work on the environment. You know, when I was a kid, I could go outside and play in the woods and do that. Now, I was just in Oregon. There's signs up. I mean, it's illegal to, to literally go out and be in nature. Yeah. If you want to live off your own water, your own power supply, that's, the, that's something that we need to get back to. Right. Why can't we go out and enjoy nature? Have to have a license to fish, to hunt. That is ridiculous. Right, Everything and, and you're licensed. absolutely right. It starts with the local elections, and that's what they don't ever want you to focus on. That's right. They pretend like it's not really that big a deal. All we should care about is this election. If they can keep you focused on a celebrity election that is so far distant from you, then they win. Uh, now, they're starting to ta start the debate here. Um, they're talking about the, the rules. rules and how they're going to do it. So we're not going to pick up with that just yet. I want to go back to this article again because there were some other things they said besides not running against Bush. This is what they said. They said uh, it was political gamesmanship that she was referencing to, saying what others wanted to hear. But then they say that they were going to go against her divisiveness. Who has been the most divisive president we've ever had? Barack Obama playing the race card constantly. And then saying it's submission to powerful interests that shut out the voices of average Americans. And yet this is the Obama who said that's the basis of his campaign when he ran uh, back in 2008. Obama who says that we don't want to have the submission of powerful interests that shut out the voices of average Americans. That's what they're doing with these trade agreements. And that might be one of the things that comes out of tonight that, that might be positive. If there's going to be a, a discussion here about the uh, trade agreements, and that may only come up because of Hillary flip-flopping flip her position. Well, it's funny because when, when, right. when, he was go when he first started his campaign, what did he say? He was going to be the most transparent yes. president ever. And he has been. <laughs> Transparently criminal. <Yeah. laughs> and, uh, he, and Hillary's even coming out and saying, oh, I'm going to be very transparent. Yeah, yeah that's they worked also out said they were going well to have whistleblower protections. Both of those promises were scrubbed from the White House yes. Yes. <laughs> website yes. because he's like, oops. That's why Just it's kidding. very important. These and guys, if I could interject, that. notice 49 minutes before we actually go to any introduction, any debate, 49, or well, I guess it was, uh, what, 19 minutes because we started at 730. Mm -hmm. But all this pomp and circumstance going on, let's get down to business. They're only going to do it for two hours. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's right. like they're trying not to get these people to talk. Here, right. here they're giving Six their debates. resume somewhat and introducing themselves, and we don't really need to, to see that. If you want to know that, you can go to their website. I just think it's absolutely amazing, and it's a lesson for all of us. As, as Obama talks about having background checks and so forth and so on, we need to run background checks on these people. Mm -hmm. We need to find out what they're about. We need to see if they're just selling us a line that's been crafted together by careful uh, consultants who know exactly what you're doing. Give them drug tests, too. Yeah. Well, drug tests. Test. That's, that's right. Yeah. Give them yeah. They should be disarmed. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. This guy right here has got the best resume on the panel. Yeah, he actually wrote his books. Uh, he's actually written 10 novels and two nonfiction books, unlike the other people whose sole accomplishment is to hire a ghostwriter you know, right. <laughs> for their books. They know how to use a novels. scratch and sniff book. <laughs> <Really>. <laughs> Jim Webb is an interesting guy. He may have some interesting things to say on foreign policy, but... Uh, 
Uh, he's a lot more interventionist than I would be, than I think the founders wanted our country to be. But uh, certainly different from the rest of the group. He was uh, Reagan's Secretary of the Navy. He's a decorated Marine veteran. He has experience in Vietnam, and he's written a lot of articles about that. From that perspective, I don't think that he would be as likely to go into war as many of these other candidates. And he has talked, one of the few things that he talks about on his uh, website is the need to have a declaration of war. People who have been there don't want to see this actually uh, be taken so casually right. and, and done on the orders of one individual. Well, I'm, I'm curious if they're going to bring up the gun debate whatsoever. I'm sure they will yeah. because obviously they want to take advantage of all these uh, horrible tragedies and try to push their own uh, anti-gun agenda. Right. But I'm curious to see what O'Malley is going to say. Yes. That Baltimore has some of the strictest gun laws. Let's see how, I want to ask him, how's gun control working for you there, buddy? Because right. there's a mass number of murders there in Baltimore on a mm -hmm. daily basis. That in Chicago Obama's little area. I mean, it's mm -hmm. ridiculous how these guys think they can get away with, with pushing this. And when you actually look at the facts, it's just not working out. We don't need mon more gun control. We need more armed citizens who can protect themselves, their families, and their property and stop these things from and happening. School, because when you take children. guns away, guess what? There's still going to be mentally crazy people out there, oh, yes. mentally ill. And guess what they're going to do? Well, overseas, they're using knives now. Right. And they're stabbing people. What are we going to go to next? Ban knives? And this going to to rock? hammers, whatever. They're going right. to find something. We can't just Boxers. ban tools. What we have to do is to get to the root of the problem and start holding these pharmaceutical companies accountable, accountable for these things because yeah. these side effects are what causes these. Yes. Right. Well, and yes. the thing is, is that you have your guns at home to protect your family, protect your children, the most valuable thing that you have, and then you send them off to school. Law-abiding citizens respect the weapons. Makes sense. They have a fear. They understand what it can and can't do. It's the mentally ill that run around waving them and doing harm. You don't see law-abiding citizens, people with a good head on their shoulders, Can't let acting that crazy. way. Can't crazy. When they, they do talk about background them. checks, one of the things that they're definitely not interested in the background is, are you on SSRI drugs? Are you on uh, murder-suicide pills? Uh, they don't, they're well, not that's interested an automatic, in that. that's an automatic yeah. push through to get the gun. Yeah. And yeah. then they're going to go and blame the gun for it out. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, there was the article that uh, came up today of the actress who uh, was saying, well, hey, it's like uh, cars, you know, we need to make it a privilege. And just understand that when they talk about cars and how dangerous cars are and how it needs to be a privilege to move around, that there really isn't a, uh, uh, I, I don't think that it ought to be a privilege. I don't think that we ought to be licensed, have to have a license to move around. And understand that they're going to use that safety issue to shut us down and not let us move around completely. They're yeah, going they to take away you. all driving and control, exactly. And as we saw earlier today, we've got uh, Google is already starting to collect air pollution readings from even being able to detect cigarette smoke and report that back to Are they going uh, the to government. detect the pollution coming out of Air Force One and all those other planes flying around all these debates? Mm -hmm. no. I, bet they, I, bet they'll, I bet they'll miss that uh, statistic right there. <laughs> so we have Governor Martin O'Malley, uh, former Governor Martin O'Malley, giving his resume right now. As soon as they start the uh, questions, we're going to go to the live audio feed and uh, see um, uh, how they respond with this. But again, as we look at this, there was this back and forth between a, uh, a Hawaiian congresswoman and uh, Deborah Wasserman Schultz, who is the DNC chairman, running these debates. And Governor O'Malley, as well as many others, have said, we need to have more debates. Bernie Sanders has said, everybody wants more debates but Hillary Clinton. But Hillary Clinton runs the Democrat National Committee through Debbie Wasserman Schultz, and she doesn't want to be vetted. Right. And she better get her practice in before she gets to the general elections, quite frankly, because she's afraid of standing on her record. She's afraid to defend her past, and that's really right. the problem. That's why they want to keep this contained. And, uh, of course, that extended today. Uh, they, they had, uh, uh, yes, you did, no, I didn't, back and forth between that uh, congresswoman and Debbie Wasserman Schultz saying that uh, uh, she was she disinvited. Was yeah. And I thought she had an interesting comment <laughs> because you can kind of see this in uh, Wasserman Schultz. She said, this is very much like a uh, high school, the way this thing is being run. And I could just see that kind of petty high school yeah. attitude in the Democrat National Committee through Debbie Wasserman Schultz. The is this girl. the uh, first question? Or he's, is he uh, giving his introduction? He's still. Yeah, he's still, he's okay. Yeah. So here's Bernie Sanders giving his introduction. I noticed a lot of people were talking about how he had youthful indiscretions as a left-wing polemicist. So <laughs> nobody wants to go back and uncover his, uh, his writings at this point in the uh, mainstream media. But I can guarantee you that if 
he gets the nomination, there's going to be a lot of opposition research on what Bernie Sanders had to say in the past. Right. Uh, he was a real firebomb. He ran as a socialist. Uh, he's been a socialist uh, from Vermont, but now, of course, he's running with the Democrat Party, and he is offering us uh, a, a socialist platform here. Something Vermont that's has the uh, highest addiction to heroin in America. <laughs> All right. Well, they talk about how, uh, who was it, Jim Webb that had sort of some uh, interesting sex scenes in his fiction books. Yeah. But those were fiction. Yeah. He was writing about some very interesting, bizarre things in nonfiction. Mm. And uh, they, they won't go there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They're I mean, very careful about it. on women and all that. It's Climate change is real, he says. It's caused by human activity. Yeah. We'll prove it, Bernie. Uh, we've seen a lot of evidence to the contrary. Uh, you might want to take a look at solar activity, Bernie, and we're not going to let you put this in, even with the blessings of the Pope, you're not going to put in a global regime to tax us. We're just not going to stand for that, quite frankly. Yeah. So, uh, but that's what they're going to sell. That's a tool of global control. Uh, that's what they're trying to establish. They've got climate change, they've got open borders, and they have the new trade treaties. It is a triple whammy to bring in global governance. Every one of the problems that we see now, we're told, can only be solved globally by erasing borders, by getting rid of national sovereignty. That's what we're seeing continuously. That's the narrative that he's feeding us at the moment. And of course, he's got his own flip-flopping program, uh, problems with uh, gun control. He was uh, perceived by the Democrats to be soft on gun control, so now he's come out uh, jousting at the mythical beast assault weapons. Because anything can be an assault weapon, right? They don't yeah. have a definition for assault weapon. It's hey guys, gun hey, that I just me. want to interrupt here. I want to say that CNN, I just heard CNN talking about, they're already making excuses for the ratings. Uh -huh. Because they're trying to compare this to the 23 million viewers that, uh, that the GOP debate had on Fox. But that was because of the Trump factor. And let's yeah. face it, without Donald Trump, not as many people are going to be watching this this evening. But Donald Trump, he is watching the debate, and he is uh, putting his remarks on Twitter. And check this out. So far, he says, the Hillary Love Fest on CNN is ridiculous. Yeah. I feel bad for the other candidates, especially the non-criminal ones. So that's that's the first of Donald Trump. He's yeah. going to be posting all night as well. I know. He's right. got no filter. What are we going to change out that pantsuit that she always wears for a nice orange jumpsuit? <laughs> Hashtag Hillary for prison. Hillary for prison 2016. Uh, yes, you can wanna... get your shirt right here. <laughs> <laughs> Go to InfoWarsStore.com for your Hillary to for prison t-shirt. We should check in with Rand Paul and some of the other candidates that like to speak out on Twitter that don't have a Twitter filter. That's right. And, you know, uh, Darren, you mentioned that, that that 23 million. They got 23. I don't know if it was Fox as well, but CNN did get 23.1 million viewers for the, their Republican debate. Uh, but, of course, most people, even uh, about half of the Democrats, are not even aware of this debate or, I guess, uh, we could say could care less. Um, maybe that's a good thing, except that they're not focused on anything that's happening at any level. Well, not just CNN says level. it's not Donald Trump. It's because of the baseball playoffs. Oh, that's it. That's yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that um, makes a lot of sense. Yeah. You know, whoever's playing. I, I kind of think there were things happening when, when uh, they had the GOP debate with Donald Trump as well. But we'll have yeah, to see about I'm that. I'm sure that wasn't planned at all in advance. Well, this is certainly <laughs> a do or die opportunity for a couple of these candidates, uh, Governor O'Malley as well as uh, Senator, former Senator Webb. So we'll see what happens with them. Lincoln Chaffee, I don't really know a great deal about she Lincoln just said Chaffee. The wealthy will no have one to does. pay their fair share of taxes. <laughs> When's the last time she's done anything? <laughs> I mean, how can, how can this woman even like seriously get on TV and say that she can relate to middle class America, to anybody out there. Well, Joe, she was broke. She and Bill were broke when they got out of the presidency. Yeah. Don't you remember? It was yeah. hard out there <laughs> they for They could barely Literally. scrape a couple of million together. <laughs> I mean, it's you know, funny. It's she a... used to be this anti-gun hippie or anti-war hippie, and now she's turned into one of the biggest warmongers. Look, Hillary has been on every side of every issue. I mean, she was a Goldwater girl at some point. It's whatever political opportunity extends itself to her. And she's willing to do anything and everything to get power. That's one of the things that makes her so dangerous. Well, even with this TPP flip-flop, you remember how she held her tongue and she said, I'm going to wait till the negotiations are over to say something about it. And it wasn't until days after the negotiations were over that she says, well, this version of it, I don't agree with it. Meanwhile, for years, I think, what, 45 times? And has she, she really been able to see it? it and 
Only the people who go through special non-disclosure agreements that are also members of Congress or the Senate are allowed to see that. How, how did she see it? How does she know? 